Halo Infinite has lost 98% of its player base since launch, and that nobody is playing the game. According to this article right here, now they do stay on Steam, which is the only place we have concrete numbers of the population. While the statistics that they used are technically accurate, I do believe it's made to more push a narrative to get clicks. And at least they got 61 shares out of it, so that means, hey, that's something. Though we have some more information beyond just the Steam charts to kind of show the current population of Halo Infinite and how it's actually not that bad. So if you like an endless supply of Halo Infinite Copium, well you came to the right place, tap that like button, make sure you subscribe to keep up to date with gaming news and let's get right into this article. Well, your first reaction is, is this true? Well if you take the lowest peak population count, keep in mind we're not using the most recent data, and you paste that in there, divide that by the highest peak player count that launch, which most games you don't maintain that population level, you see that yeah, we're at 2%. So that's it, it's over, video done, they're right, no one likes Halo Infinite. You guys got to check out Hex Gaming. Now, Hex Gaming are basically a company that modifies the real deal controllers for PlayStation or Xbox and they make it into whatever you'd like. You can choose a decal, your colors on the joysticks, like, like literally every aspect of the controller you can decide what you want to look like to have your ultimate gaming experience. The controller that they sent me is the Ultra X controller. Now the really cool thing about this is it has these paddles on the back right as you would expect any good controller to have. The thing is though you can have six different profiles you can remap these panels to and it's all color coded on the back so all you need to do is just double tap the button change the color profile completely different remapping for those back buttons and since this is a high-end gaming controller you also have the concave or convex sticks you can have in your controller and you can also have the long or short versions personally i like the long version right there on my right stick it gives me a little bit extra travel distance so i can have a little bit higher sensitivity you can even adjust the triggers on it my triggers on this are like basically pressing a button it's not even like a trigger pull anymore and i love that so if you guys want to check out hex gaming yourself well check out the pinned comment here, here in the video or in the description to get yourself five percent off if we use my code chemicalx at checkout. Plus I get a little kickback and help support the channel. But let's get right back into those details. But what if we use a little bit more accurate data from this? Then when you grab the most recent average number, divide that by the average number back in November when the game launched for multiplayer, like yeah, we're at like 3%, so we're kind of splitting hairs really. So yeah, that's it. The article's right. Where's this video going? Well, then the next thing to point out is, well, what are the Xbox numbers? Well, we have a general idea because you have to scroll all the way down to 21st to get to where Halo Infinite is for the most played games on Xbox. Now we don't know what metrics they really use if it's total play time, total player count, but it should give you a general understanding about where the population is sitting right now at the moment, which you might think, oh my god, all the way down in the 20s, nobody's playing Halo. A very important thing to take into consideration is the fact of the platform itself. Some platforms for a game flourish while others are basically non-existent. For example, a game like Call of Duty, which was blowing up in national news would actually do really poorly on Steam because of how poorly the ports performed on the platform. Though as of recently the PC ports of Call of Duty have actually been really good and we've seen that popularity increase as well. In fact the platform has been improved so well that console is actually the minority of player base in Call of Duty. This is the most accurate data that we have of Call of Duty's player base since it was actually revealed back in the FTC Microsoft case that 51% of players, that's 70 million total players, are playing on mobile, 25% on PC, 16 on PlayStation, and 8% on Xbox. And with Warzone Mobile coming out later this year as confirmed by the FTC Microsoft case, that mobile platform is gonna blow up even more. Going back to Halo, there are obvious factors that what caused such a steep population decline for the game. One was the obvious lack of updates. We went six, 10 months without a seasonal update, even though we were promised three to four months per season before the launch of the game. So the game got boring and stale really quick. And there were also some bugs that got in the way of the experience, but I mean, you look at any Bethesda game, people are still gonna play through bugs anyways, because majority of the time, it's gonna be pretty fun. Another thing that really hurt the Steam population numbers when it comes to Halo Infinite is that for the longest time, mouse and keyboard input was clearly the inferior input device to choose to play on when it comes to playing Halo. Steam, being the PC platform, 
Most people are going to want to use mouse and keyboard. Yes, there are some games you can mainly use controller on, but as a first person shooter, people want to use mouse and keyboard when it comes to playing on Steam. And it wasn't until the winter update where mouse and keyboard got aim assist, which was a crazy bug that they just decided to leave in the game because people liked it, that actually made mouse and keyboard a viable option within the game. We will also see that baseline population of Halo Infinite increase. It's not going to go any lower than I think it just did, mainly because we just experienced our first true seasonality of season three and then that lasts about three or four months then we moved into season four and then we're gonna do the same thing again when it comes to season five in october so with new content and updates and things to do within the game it's gonna keep people playing that was the biggest issue with halo infinite and i do feel like we're gonna see a turnaround when it comes to community sentiment about halo infinite where i think people are gonna be like you know what it's actually a pretty good game now. But Halo Infinite seems to actually be doing all right for itself when it comes to population on the Xbox side of things. Back in January of 23, Xbox Game Pass hit new highs with the platform hitting 120 million monthly active users. So you would say that, yeah, Game Pass is a very popular service that Xbox provides and people play a lot of things that are available on Game Pass. This is where an important bit of information comes in. Because on the Xbox most played games, if you go to subscription, type in Game Pass to have that filter on, you see Halo Infinite is actually listed number three on the Xbox platform as most played game that's under Game Pass. That's more people playing Halo Infinite compared to like Skyrim or Fallout, Fallout 76, CFDs, DayZ even. So when it comes to Halo Infinite and population, I believe the context of where Halo Infinite is currently sitting is very important. As Halo is only available on Steam and the Xbox platforms, it's not going to be as popular as say a Call of Duty, Apex Legends, or even Fortnite. Because with those games, you can literally play them on anything that can produce a graphical image. Now I'm not trying to supply you with infinite amounts of copium for Halo Infinite. Obviously the game is not in the best state it could be. It's definitely gotten better and it's getting better, though it's certainly not ideal. And you would also think with the game maybe not performing as expected by Microsoft, they probably wouldn't have laid off their entire campaign team and audio team. That's why we saw in my previous video, we're talking about the leaked out season four cinematic that was actually fully done, but just didn't have any audio because there was nobody at Microsoft in 343 to make the audio for it. And Halo Infinite is still lacking that mode that really will capture people, that big signature mode that we've seen within Halo for over a decade now. Back in Halo Reach, we had Invasion, which was people loved. I personally loved Invasion as well. Halo 4, we had Sparring Ops, obviously not that well done, but a really great idea, and that was the big signature mode. Halo 5, we had Warzone, which is a really great idea. I think it could have been executed a little bit better, but still a fun game mode. But then you go with Halo Infinite, and your big game game mode is just a slightly bigger version of Big Team Battle, which is an experience that we've had in Halo since the launch of the franchise. Though I do feel like it's really important when you see these population numbers and articles go up online, that you understand that there is some context that is needed for them. You can't take them on face value. So just remember when someone says nobody is playing Halo Infinite, they're really just trying to get your click. 